Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at another process that I use regularly, and that's screencasting. Um, in an earlier video, I talked about showing as opposed to telling as you're working with individuals uh, or as you're teaching others. Um, I've also talked about screen captures. That's one of the steps of the process. Now I want to take a little bit of time and look at screencasting. Um, in fact, what I'm doing right now is screencasting. So surprise, surprise. Um, but the gist of what I'm talking about here is that as you're writing online, as you're creating content and sharing content and interacting with others, there's a couple skills that I think that you need to have. One of those um, is screen captures that's taking static images from your screen and maybe annotating it. And the other is a screencast. Um, and the reason, as I've said before, is that you know, frequently I'm around screens all of the time. I have screens in my pocket, I have screens in my house, I have screens in my office, I have screens in my classroom. Um, you know, I carry two or three screens around with me in my bag, um, but I always have screens around and I'm frequently taking these out um, to explain or demonstrate or read or write or communicate or learn. So as you're creating content and you're sharing this content with others, I think it's important that we figure out how we can show as opposed to tell. In the video about screen captures, I explained that, you know, part of the challenge is if you're trying to explain to someone how to get around a new environment, you know, it might be, all right, how do I get around Google Drive? And this can be pretty complex figuring out, okay, how do I upload old files? How do I create new files? You know, I want to create uh, a Google Form, but I don't see Google Forms here, so obviously Google Drive is broken. Um, but these are some of the, the questions that I regularly get, you know, as I try to get students or colleagues or even family and friends to use some of these digital texts and tools. I'll get a lot of, of comments, complaints, questions about, well, how do I make this happen? Um, and so what I found myself doing back in the day is, you know, once again, I would be in uh, my email inbox and I would be sending out messages textual directions telling people how to get around a specific environment so as an example um, you know I would write out first go click on the blue button that says new in the left hand side of the screen slide down to where it says more hover over more at some point your computer will pop up the rest the, the rest of the menu and go to Google Forms and click on Google Forms um, and so once again, I have textual directions, very linear, granular directions telling people how to get around around that environment. And one of the things that always happens is as we make those changes, as we add those directions, not soon after I found this happens pretty much every time, not soon after I send those directions out, the interface changes. Google changes it, this blue button becomes some other color, or they become, it's a white button, or it moves from here over to there, or, um, or people can't figure out how to use it. Um, and so that was, was, uh, infuriating. It was asinine that I'm typing out these textual directions to get around this multimodal environment. Multimodal environment, what I'm talking about is all of these, you know, images and graphics and links and pictures and text and sometimes video and other content that basically makes up this interface. So I'm giving you textual directions that you're reading and coming back here. That's ridiculous. Um, and so one of the things I started doing a while ago is saying, okay, we need to show as opposed to tell. So we need to um, have a couple different tools in our tool belt. One of those is screen captures. That's those static images that we may or may not annotate. And then the other side of things I was thinking about was um, how to create uh, screen casting. So I got the idea for screen casting from video walkthroughs. So as I've, I explained this in my classes, but if you're a, a video game player, um, what I would do back in the day is if we couldn't figure out how to beat a level, we would go online or we'd go into books and we would look through a walkthrough of a video game. And so as an example, I can look at this game here and they'll give us a walkthrough of the level of the game and show us how to beat it. Um, and so, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm playing video games with my kids and I'm watching a video game walkthrough 
and and I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I beat that one level that I couldn't beat? Um, and then I sort of watch the video a little bit, hit pause, go back and play it. Um, as I'm doing this, I started to wonder, well, why can't I do that in teaching and learning? Like, why can't I have a walkthrough, um, you know, as I'm as I'm showing other people how to get around this environment? How can I use that instead of writing out these textual directions? Are there better ways that I could use that idea of like a walkthrough in video games to use it for teaching and learning and showing people how to get around those screens that I'm constantly um, trying to negotiate in my own work? So I started to create screencasts um, or basically just a video of what's happening on your screen. Um, so you, you basically uh, run a frame of a video on your screen, you have a mic hooked up, you may or may not speak to the mic. So in essence, you're watching a screencast right now. So I'm showing you how to get around the environment on my computer, I'm showing you the screens of my environment. The nice thing is, I can create this screencast once. Um, and then later on, when I have questions, I can send people back to the original video that I make. So this video right here, if I have someone that says, okay, what is a screencast? I can say, I happen to have a video all about screencasts. Um, and so the, the idea here is just creating these videos or these screencasts so that you can help guide others um, as opposed to those textual directions. Now, once again, there is, the, there is the need to create screen captures and screencasts. And you need to think about, okay, which is the best use of my time and the best use of uh, the audience's time or the ultimate learner's time. Um, so the person that you're going to share this with, what's going to work best for them? Are they the type of person that will click through a, a quick video or will they rather see the images or do they need text? Or do they most likely need a mix of those, a compilation of all of those different elements? Okay, so we're talking about screen captures, the static images, and then scaling to the other side of the spectrum and a full-blown video walking people through what your expectations are. So this video is going to focus on the philosophy behind it. We'll get into subsequent videos about specific tools. There's different tools for different platforms, different tools for different uses, but this is the philosophy. And once again, if we can figure out the philosophy, the tools don't really matter. Um, so we're going to take a look at creating a video. Now, the truth of the matter is my tool of choice right now is Screencast-O-Matic. I'll have videos on Screencast-O-Matic, but I'm using Screencast-O-Matic right now to record this video. Um, so I'm going to use a different tool uh, to, to give us a better idea of what this looks like. So the tool that I'm going to use um, is called Nimbus Screen Recorder. Uh, recorder for Chrome. So I'm taking a look at Nimbus Screen Recorder. A lot of times I will use uh, Chromebooks in my classroom. I will uh, use Chromebooks in school. Nimbus tends to be a really good tool to use for screen captures and screen recording. So I just want to use this to give us an example of opportunities. So I have Nimbus installed right here. And what I can do is, it's this little button. Okay, so once you install the extension, what I'm looking at is this little button up here. So if I click on that, I'm going to get all of these dip different options. These don't really matter. I'll have an upcoming video. But I'm going to click on record video. And so what this will do is, if I click on record video, I'll have different options. I can record the mic sound. I'm going to leave that on. Actually, I'm going to turn it off because I don't know if it's going to mess up my mic now as I'm recording. I can record the tab sound. So if there's audio coming off of the tab, if I'm recording a video, um, that would record the audio from it. Do I want drawing tools on there? Do I want a countdown? There's other video settings in here. Um, typically, what I advise students to do is go for HD. Um, like a Blu-ray quality. You don't need full HD or 4K, but I'm going to leave all of this stuff alone right now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tab, not desktop. I don't want to record all of my desktop right now. I'm just going to record this one tab that I'm on. So if I hit start record, it'll give me a little bit of a countdown. And then now it's recording. 
Okay. Um, one of the reasons I prefer screencast o matic as opposed to Nimbus is it's sort of hard to tell that it's recording now. Um, so it is recording because I can see the little icon turn red, um, you know, and then I see that this is this little icon here. It says it's being shared, um, but it's sort of hard to tell that it's really recording anything right now. And if I go back up and click on this, it'll tell me that it's recording. Um, and the nice thing is if I'm here, I can click on different things. I can scroll around. Um, what I've seen people do in the past is they would, you know, open up a document. Um, it's not going to, it's not going to switch off from this tab, but what I've seen teachers do in the past is they might now record the video and sort of give feedback on something that you've written. Um, over time, but there's once you have the recording happening, anything that's in this frame is going to get recorded and the audio is going to get captured. So if I go back up and hit stop recording, what Nimbus will do is it will open up a new tab for me and it will show me the video that it pulled from this. So I can see in here that the video has been captured, I can see the amount of time. Um, it's sort of hard to see, but you can see my little cursor floating around. Um, once again, I did not record audio for this. Um, and the main reason I didn't record audio, audio is I didn't know if it would mess up with my current video now. Um, but if I wanted to, I could do exactly what I'm doing now in this screencast in this piece here. It's the same process. Um, and so what I can do is I can save the video and I can download this um, as a specific file. Um, and, and send it out to wherever I want to. So now I can either uh, upload this to YouTube. That's what I advise my students to do. That's what I do. I think it's the easiest way to get content out there. Um, I can also download the video and save the video into Dropbox. I can save it into Google Drive and share it. And we'll talk about all of this stuff in future videos. But the idea here is Creating a video of content on your screen in which you narrate and talk people through the ideas. That is a screencast. That is a fundamental skill that you need to have. Okay. Um, I've seen screencasting used where teachers will um, give uh, verbal feedback on student writing. I've used it in the past to show lesson plans and give feedback to students on how I want my lesson plan filled out, how... Um, you know, specific elements of the lesson plan template that I want them to pay attention to. I also use Screencast-O-Matic at times or screencasting at times to give feedback on uh, specific lesson plans or student writing to show them what I like, didn't like, what they need to improve. Screencasting is also a great opportunity to give feedback on content that's a little bit harder to annotate and mark up. As an example, in some of my classes, I have students build a website or a portfolio, and it's sort of hard to print out their web page, you know, and sort of mark up and say, okay, clean up this, or you have a spelling error here, where what I can do is I can run screencasting software and quickly, um, as I'm recording, you know, say, hey, I really like this opening. I like this text and how it's rotating through. Um, I like the way that you structured things. On your video page, I like the layout of the different uh, videos and stuff like that. Um, this looks really nice. So there's a way to share your insight, share feedback quickly with students. And once again, the idea with this is a screencast. Um, the thinking is that you basically look at what's happening on the screen, hit record, and you create a little movie. Some general guidelines for screencasting. Uh, first of all, my my fit my feeling with screencasting is I typically um, aim small, miss small, and what that means is uh, my screen, my software right now is set up for uh, Blu-ray quality, uh, and I boost my screen size up a little bit. So I've zoomed in to you can't tell here, but 125% when I make these videos. So saying that a different way, that's a little bit more clear. I'm recording this right now at a really nice big screen and I don't want to record it full screen because what it's going to do is it's going to blow out the video and make it much more difficult to actually see what I'm talking about. So what I do is I make the frame of this video uh, smaller and I basically scrunch my browser or whatever I'm recording 
into the frame so that you, dear viewer, can see what I'm talking about. At the same time, what I'll do is I will boost the view of this up a little bit. Um, so I had this set to 125. I can ramp it up, but I feel like for these videos, 125 is pretty decent. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm aiming small and missing small. The other habit or the rule of thumb that I have that I'm not following on this video is I think short videos are better. Um, I'm a hypocrite right now because right now I'm looking at the clock and it's 15 minutes, but short videos are better. So what I typically try to do is I try to chunk my videos and get smaller, shorter videos. So if you're going to do a video on screencasting or if you're going to do videos on voice thread in your classroom or searching with Google, um, think about smaller, shorter videos that you can make a series of them um, and stitch them all together. So you might say, okay, here's how to create a VoiceThread account in two minutes. Here's how to, you know, search in VoiceThread in two minutes. Here's how to create uh, an initial VoiceThread uh, piece in two minutes. So I think two to three minutes is a good, you know, a, a good starting point for videos. Longer videos people te technically don't watch. And once again, do as I say, not as I do. I'm being a hypocrite because this thing is dragging on much longer than I ever want them to. Um, so once again, the idea is screencasting, uh, aim small, miss small, uh, you know, keep the videos short, um, and basically get out there and make them. Um, with screencasting, the reason why I'm making screencasts now and the reason why I have some clue about this is because I've been doing this for about 10 to 15 years now. I've been in classrooms teaching teachers how to do it. Um, the best way to learn how to screencast is to screencast. Um, you're dealing with digital video. If you hit record, if I'm recording this right now and it doesn't work, all I do is delete it and start all over again. That's the best way to do it. That's the best way to build up your skill set and figure out what works best for you. So hopefully this works best. Hopefully this works well for you. Hopefully it works best too, but hopefully it works well at least to get started. Um, I have more content and materials up on my website and hopefully that'll help you out. WIOBurn.com. Please, by all means, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. The newsletter unpacks this and then some. And what I'm looking at is making you the expert in teaching and learning and tech. Um, subscribe, and this will get hand-delivered to your email inbox uh, once a week, typically Friday or Saturday. Um, and it's basically looking at the nuance and some of the events of the week in teaching, learning, tech, education, literacy, everything in that little intersection there. Um, so hopefully this helps you out. By all means, subscribe, give me thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know what worked, what didn't work, and give me comments that I need to make shorter videos. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.